Film School, Columbia College, Chicago. And uh, I always was kind of making docs and narratives uh, simultaneously because I think they're still just stories. I think what's great about documentaries is the fact that we are shooting real people and we're discovering real stories. And I think when you get to understand the complexity of, of, of humans and of, of our personalities and how layered we are and how hip, hypocritical we can be with our own selves, that can only help inform the characters I write as when I make my narrative movies. I shot Dependence Day in April and I shot the first Victor Walk in May. Mm -hmm. And then uh, by the time all the assistant editing and transcoding happened, we were, you know, I was editing Dependence Day on July 1st and my producing partner Paul was editing uh, Victor Walk on July 1st. So literally both film started editing at the same time. Uh, Dependence Day ended up finishing first and Dependence Day had its world premiere in March and won the audience award at Cinequest and then obviously we landed a distribution deal. Victor Walk had its world premiere in June at Dances with Films and won Best Doc. Yeah. Um, and now we're here at our big Canadian premiere at Whistler. Uh, with in Theo Fleury, I actually was developing a Hollywood movie uh, of Theo's life. And then uh, as you see in the trailer and in the movie, when Graham James only got two years, uh, Theo went back into therapy. Right. So when he went back into therapy, he was like, hey Mike, I don't want to have a sensationalized story about me. I don't want people, you know, I, I just need therapy and let's not do a Hollywood movie. So that got shelved. And uh, then later on, he, you know, we stayed friends and he told me that he was doing uh, this Victor walk. When you talk to Theo, he'll say that the Stanley Cup and, and the gold medal means nothing to him anymore. You know, like he, he feels all of his hockey career was to give him a voice to spread awareness about child sex abuse. So within that context of understanding that that's where Theo's headspace is right now, and me being a friend and, and kind of keeping uh, contact with them, when he told me that he was gonna do this Victor walk, I said, we should film this. No, I walked. You walked I walked 40 kilometers backwards a day for 10 days. Um, with the camera on your shoulder. I didn't have it on my shoulder. Uh, I, I, I chose not to do a shoulder mount because mm -hmm. I thought a shoulder mount would alienate people from wanting to open up and talk. I would have the cannon pushing against my neck and I'd have a GoPro on a stick to get two angles. Right. And then I had an audio pouch to have audio. I would lob Theo up and then I just had a boom mic on the, the camera. So I was a one man operation. Nice. I would have to charge batteries and dump all the footage at night. So it was, it, it was one of the hardest things I've ever done. Well, day zero was the media day. So day zero, here I am pushing against my neck really hard. And again, I, like I, told you, I just shot Dependence Day. So Dependence Day, I had a big red camera with the shoulder mount. And I'm like, and I work out. So I'm like, oh, I can handle this. This picture walk away, no problem. Right. Day zero, we're at media day and I'm pushing. I, and it's 14 hours because it's CBC. Every major news station in Canada, whether radio or TV, we're getting interviewed by. So I wake up the day one of the walk. My back is destroyed. And I'm like, how am I going to make this? I really didn't think this through. And it was 10 days. And it was 10 days walk. So I have mapped my run on my phone. So uh, when we started the walk, I remember hearing my phone say, you have walked one mile. No. It allowed me to forget the pain was when the survivors would come up to us and tell us their story. The minute a survivor would share their story to us on camera, uh, whether we're, we're, we're just walking the highway and they yeah. just pull over right. and then tell us their story. A lot of survivors are on different paths of their, uh, the journey of their healing process. You know, <clears throat> on the walk, there's some people that maybe could, could just say me too and they couldn't really say anything beyond that versus you might have someone who tell you a detailed description of their abuse and they've healed and they've been going to, you know, maybe the Quinty Sexual Assault Center, which is in Ontario, or they maybe they've gotten help. So we saw survivors all spectrums of the gamut from still can't talk about it to fully open. Right. And regardless of where they were on their journey, when people would pull over, get that hug from Theo, tell Theo their story, then tell me their story when I would quickly do an interview. Th the fact that they see that they're not alone. Right. They're able to see how many other people are, have experienced what they have. Maybe not their exact experience. Yeah, but, but they're still similar. traumatized. Right, and uh, you know, one of the, the best things as well when we've been screening the movie um, has been every time I've done a test screening or a screening, people come up to us afterwards and say, me too, or, um, I had someone who, who uh, a friend of my wife's, who came out and said, "I was, you know, I was raped by my, my sorry, molested by my grandparents when I was younger, and when I was 12, I was raped by my friend's brother who was 20, and I limped home." 
And then she started crying and then she started laughing and then she goes, I feel so much better that I finally told somebody. I think another reason why people are willing to open to Theo is, you know, especially the men, why the men open up to Theo, because men I think have a harder, everyone has a hard time coming out, but with men, you have the male ego. And because Theo, being a hockey player, who was not only just a great goal scorer, but he could fight and he could hit, so he's seen as being a manly man. Mm -hmm. If a guy who's that manly can come out, be vulnerable, be honest, and not lose his identity and still be himself, I think that's what empowers everyone who speaks to him to be like, if he can do that, I can do it too. Part of Victor Walk is the profiles of courage from all these survivors who then come out. Yeah. You know, and, and then Theo is almost like their guide because like he said, what's some of the best conversations he's had is going on a walk with a friend. And anyone can go on a walk with a friend. And that was a big part of the message. And, and a big part of the message as well is the fact that trauma is the string that ties us all together. You know, not everyone maybe has had child sex abuse, but they've had some kind of trauma. We want it to change the world. Uh, we're gonna try very hard to get it out there. You know, here at Whistler, we're talking to a lot of distributors. Um, you know, we, we, we wanna do a lot of small screenings around Canada. Uh, I, you know, we would like to have it in educational markets. We'd like to have it at high schools. We'd like to have it at colleges. So, I mean, you know, we have a lot of ambitious things we'd like to see the documentary do. And I think the best part is the fact that we have it done right. and it's finished and we're so proud of it. So I think no matter what, it'll be this piece of history that happened. I wanted Victor to be a therapeutic tool. I wanted it to be a tool where people can really understand how to heal and how to move forward with their lives. Because it's too often that we um, roll around in our negative past and then we keep replaying in our bad thoughts or negative thoughts and we keep beating each other up, uh, beating ourselves up or we have, a lot of people who've been abused feel they're not worthy, right. they, their self-worth has been majorly hit. And we're trying to lift them up. We're trying to empower them in this film. There's a lot of people that were hurt, if you when you watch Doug Many, who are coming to Theo and they're crying and they're mad at their abuser. And Theo, you know, was one, you know, late. He goes, forget about him. Focus on you.